so the topic of discussion is greedy algorithms so this is the topic in fourth unit uh, already we have seen a few uh, problems that deals uh, by the uh, technique called uh, dynamic programming so that also closely uh, related with the optimization problem and here also we are going to see a problem that is of optimization in nature but the problem solving procedure is via greedy approach so what is first of all greedy approach so greedy is a algorithmic paradigm that builds up a solution piece by piece and always choosing the next piece that offers the most obvious and immediate benefit so what it means is uh, when you are going to construct a solution for a problem the solution is a chain of uh, sub solutions while you are arriving the chain of uh, sub solutions then the entire chain will be treated as the complete solution for the problem so while you are uh, tying up the chain one by one with the so many sub solutions first of all you should choose your one sub solution that uh, optimizes the given criteria then from that uh, sub solution you have to choose another sub solution likewise the solution will go every time when you want going to choose a sub solution from the entire solution space you are provided with many solutions you are provided with many that is you have been provided with many alternatives among that alternative you have to choose one that best leads to the uh, global uh, solution for the given problem so accordingly you have to choose the uh, each and every step you have to choose the solution so that is the greedy algorithm this can be uh, very well understood with the following example problem first of all they have discussed about a fractional knapsack problem so what is fractional knapsack problem is see uh, your cap a cap a uh, yeah, knapsack of capacity is given here 50 and you have been provided with uh, so many items here three items are given a b c three items are given for each item you have been provided with the weight and associated value weight is the actual weight of the item and value is the profit by which if you carry that item uh, in the uh, knapsack so that means uh, it, it, it has reached the uh, that means uh, it has the value it has the value that is uh, it has a gain like that of stuff so it, you don't confuse with the value with the capacity so you should always uh, take care of the weight with the capacity so if you put together the weight if that weight comes around 50 then it is uh, said that the capacity of the bag is reached so not with the value so you should not confuse like that so when you are going to add these three items into the knapsack since it is a fractional knapsack so i can add this uh, a item fully and its uh, profit is 60 i can add this uh, item 20 as a fully right so now how many items i have added i have added two items and the summation of weight of the two item is 30 so remaining how many items is there uh, 20 uh, value items will be is there so what you have to do you have only one item that item is of capacity uh, uh, 30 so what you can do you can do a fraction you can do a fraction that is 2 bar 3 of the weight item c so you have to cut the c into three parts into three parts out of the three parts uh, you have to choose only two parts and put it in the knapsack so in doing so you will get the total weight value of 50 and the total uh, capacity as uh, 240 so this is the uh, profit so there are other ways also you can arrange the item but whenever you go for arranging the items as for the greedy procedure you should always look for the maximum value you should always maximum value so that sense you have to proceed right so this is the uh, simple example for uh, understanding the greedy algorithm so what is the problem that is given in your solution is there are two problems that are given in your solution uh one problem is uh, activity selection problem another problem is huffman coding uh first let me uh, discuss about the uh, activity selection problem so in your activity selection problem yeah, i will give this uh, uh, give this uh, this is a gigs per gig material only thanks for gigs per gigs uh, yeah, they have explained the material uh, they have explained the problem in a very uh, classroom level manner and it is easier for us to understand so i i will give this link also in google classroom you can refer that idea but straight away i go to uh, the activity selection problem so what is the thing given in activity selection is problem is or what is the objective of activity selection problem is look at this uh, you are given with n activities with the n start times and finish time so you are provided with uh, n number of activities for each activity you should have a start time and you should have a end time 
and what is your goal is you have to select the maximum number of activities that can be performed by a single person assuming that a person can only work on a single activity at a time so that manner you have to choose the uh, activity that is every time a person has to work on one activity but you have to give as many as maximum possible activities to that single person so what is uh, done here is see for example here they are provided the three activities and is for each activity you have a short time and a finish time and the problem asked here is a person can perform at most uh, uh, two activities um, at most of two activities uh, the maximum set of activities that can be executed is 0 comma 2 uh, these are the indexes instance so that is the zeroth index first index second index so the maximum activity that can be performed is uh, the answer for this problem is uh, zero and two that is a zeroth activity and a second end. so those are the two so how this uh, answer is arrived so let me explain this with another example consider the following six activities by the start answer so what is the activities this is the start time and finish time for the activity zeroth activity first activity second activity third activity fourth activity fifth activity so in what order you could you could perform this up uh, uh, execute this uh, uh, task so first you have to choose the zeroth activity then the uh, first activity uh, then the third activity then fourth activity in what order you have to choose them So it has been chosen in such a, in such a way that, that, that they have given the procedure. Short the activities according to their finish time. First of all, you should short the activities according to their finish time. So according to the finish time, you have to short. Uh, select the first activity from the sorted array and print it. Select the first activity from the sorted array and then you print it. So this is the sorted order, first order activity and then print it. Print it. And then do the following for remaining activities in the sorted array. So what you have to do is you have to choose the activity by shorting the finishing time. Why you have to choose that? Because the greedy choice is always to pick the next activity whose finish time is the least among the remaining activities. So you have to choose the activity whose uh, finish time is least. That is, you should always see uh, first you assign one task to the person. So now you are in a position to choose another task and assign to the person. Now you have been provided with so many tasks. So, so many activities. So, you have to think about what activity I have to choose so that I can give it to the person so that the person can do a maximum of activities from a given span of time. So, you should always go for an activity which has least amount of time. So, accordingly, you have to choose the activity and then next. Or what you can do is under the start time, under the start time is more than or equal to the finish time of the previous start time. Because that is more important. Start time should be more because if you once the task is assigned, the person is allowed to, to execute only one activity. After finishing the activity, only you have to choose. So another idea. So you should always look for the activity whose start time is equal to the finishing time of that particular activity or the more than that activity. Then only the person can finish it and come to that activity. So the what you have to do is you should always uh, short the uh, activities according to their finishing time. And then you will proceed with the next activity, which is having the uh, minimum finishing time activity. So in that procedure, you can uh, solve this uh, problem. And this is called activity selection problem. It is very easy. Eh? And the next uh, uh, application is Huffman coding. So this is the coding that is being popularly used in the data compression side. Uh, when you are sending data in a channel and uh, before sending the data you need to compress the data and then if you want to send the data means then what you can do is you can go for some kind of uh, coding coding is nothing but uh, assigning some kind of uh, values or that is numerical values to your characters or uh, some symbolic values to uh, numbers or any letters alphabets like this on. so what is that is here some kind of variable length code is assigned variable say for example you are sending a text uh, hello means uh, H, how many times it is uh, coming? One time. Uh, e, one time. L, two time. O, one time. So like that, you should have a you should have a frequency of the letters appearing in the uh, given word. So in this, uh, all letters come uh, only one time, but except the word L. L comes at two times. According to the frequency of the characters, you should assign the some kind of code. You should assign the some kind of code, or you should assign some kind of bit sequences. So that is the uh, idea here. When you are uh, going for this uh, concept, see, say for example, 
let let us take an example. I want to say, send four characters A, B, C, D. So if I assign the corresponding uh, variable length code, so for A I have assigned a double zero, for B I have assigned a zero one, and for C I have assigned a zero, and for D I have assigned a one. So there is a problem occurs. There is a problem that means that some kind of ambiguity occurs here. What kind of ambiguity is? Say for example the code assigned to C, what is zero? So when you are sending this one, if you if any uh, decoder uh, receives this text. When it finds to finds the word zero, or uh, then the word not uh, letter zero, then immediately it is C, it is C. So when you are going to send this text, there are a lot of confusion is there. Say for example, if you are uh, understanding this first two zero as A, then A is printed, and zero one as B, then B is printed. So the answer is A B. So only one answer is there. But it is not so. Sometimes there are a possibility to uh, check this zero. So what is this zero refers to? The zero refers to C. What is this another zero? This is zero. So, so C, C, C. What is this one? D. So you can get the answer of triple C, D. Or else what you can do? This zero for C and this zero for C and this zero one for B. So C, C, B. So uh, only one answer is not possible. Many answers. Are. So while you are going to choose the code, you have to carefully choose the code so that such kind of ambiguity won't occur. So what do you have to do for that? You For that you have to, do, you have to build a tree. You have to build a tree. The tree is called a Huffman tree. You have to build a Huffman tree. And then you have to traverse the tree to assign the codes to the characters. So while you are assigning characters or while assigning code to the character in order to avoid such kind of ambiguity, you have to draw a Huffman tree from the set of input characters and then traverse the Huffman tree and assign the codes. Uh, how to build the Huffman tree? Say for example, let us assume an input. The input is an array of unique characters along with the frequency of occurrences and the output is a, uh, 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 the output going to be. So what, what you have to do, create a leaf node for each unique character and build a bin heap of all the nodes. First of all, you should create a leaf node for each unique character. Wherever you find a unique character that is without any uh, uh, repetition, and uh, that uh, character occurs only one at a time, you have to choose all those characters and make it as a leaf node and uh, try to build a min heap of all the leaf nodes. You know what is min heap. Right, min heap is uh, used as a priority queue. The value of frequency field is usually compared to nodes in min queue. Initially, the least frequent character is at root, so that you know minimum heap level, uh, minimum value root node value node will be there at the root node. Right. So at the next level, uh, uh, higher than the root node. And the next level, still higher than the first level node. Next level, still higher than the second level node. Like that. What you have to do next? Uh, extract uh, two nodes with the minimum frequency from the min heap. That is the another thing. Next, based on that, you have to create a new internal node with a frequency equal to the sum of the two nodes frequency and it makes the first extracted node as its left child and the other extract is known as the right child. And add this node to the min heap. So likewise, you need to repeat these step two and three until the heap contains only one node. The remaining node is the root node. When you find that the finally left with only one node, that is the final node that that node is the remaining node, and that remaining node is uh, taken as a root node, and the, it is said that the tree is complete, right? So let us understand the uh, algorithm with an example. So let, let me see. This is the character. So I have uh, how many characters? A, B, C, D, E, F. So I have six characters, and these are all the frequencies for each character. So what do you have to do? First, I have to build a min heap that contains six nodes, where each node represents the root root of a tree with a single node. So now A is a root node, B is a root node, C is a root node, D is a root node, E is a root node. Now what you have to do? Extract uh, two minimum frequency nodes from min heap, add a new internal node with the frequency of it. So now minimum frequency node, two node, five plus one. So next, and then I add it as a, so A whose frequency is five, B whose frequency is nine. So this is, it is represented in the linked list form. So I can make it like that. So this is the case. Next, what is the step? Uh, now, the min heap contains five nodes, where four nodes are the roots of the trees with a single element at uh, each one is the and uh, each one heap is the root node of the, the three elements. This three elements. Now, what do you have to do? Again, these two nodes have gone. This is the internal node. Now we extract uh, C D with the minimum frequency and add new node. So to if you add this node, I can get uh, 25 uh, C 12. 30. So now I have two. Uh, Different tree, two different tree. Now I can take the E. Uh, so E I have added here uh, 14 
uh, 16th, uh, let's say, because uh, that uh, is compared with the tree, it has to the correct position you have to be submitted here. So, likewise, you have to choose the node F and you have to assign it like this here, like this here. Hmm? So, in that way, you have to assign the node and you have to construct the tree, right? So, once again, I'm repeating the same. First, you should choose any two node and you have to assign the same. We are going to construct them in here. And then you have to choose the another uh, character with the minimum frequency on the heap and uh, two things you are saying. So now we have two nodes. One is with the root node 25 and the left child is uh, C12 and D13. Another is with the root node 14 with the left child A and the right child is B. So what else uh, we have left? So we have left E and F. Now take the E. So what is this uh, E value? Uh, e value is 16. So 16 should be added here. Yes, we have uh, added 30. So 16 is at the right location for the bin heap construction for adding the E should be here, but not with here. Why it is not with here? Because if it is added, uh, it is not possible, right? It's not possible. So that's why we are not added uh, here in this tree, but it is possible here. Next, another node is uh, 45. Uh, that is, uh, yeah, uh, if you could uh, add that, then we will have uh, 55 because you have uh, 25 as like one internal node and another one is 30. So if you add that two node, you have uh, 55. So that is the uh, final tree that you have drawn. So I'll, another that uh, you have, have another node, the internal for you, F is 45. So if you sub, uh, add a 45, is before you have 100. So 100, you have put 45. So that is the idea, right? Now you can understand what is the thing that is uh, connected here. So now the minimum contains only one node. That is the only one node which is uh, whose frequency is 100. So after that, what you have to do, you have to take the items. Uh, you have to traverse the tree. Uh, because you need to build the code, right? You have to traverse the tree. So if you zero means you have to go this side, one means you have to go this side, zero, one, zero, one, like that, zero, like that you can put. Now character F, what is the code word for character F? It is zero. What is the code word for character C? It is uh, one, zero, zero, because one is here, zero, zero is here. What is the code word for D? One, zero, one, uh, one, zero, zero. Uh, now uh, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, and one, one, zero, one, 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 triple one for E. So that is the idea you have to print the characters. So first you need to build a tree uh, that is the bin heap tree according to the conditions uh, provided. And after considering the tree, then you have to assign the code for each path. That is uh, left side of the zero, right side one. Accordingly, you scan the entire tree and fill the code. And finally, you decode the codes and write on the code. Now, if you could see that there is no ambiguity here. There is no ambiguity here. So, so some may say that, sir, if, may, if it is uh, sent to one double zero, so that uh, zero, one is not taken. So one zero is also not taken because no tree is. So totally we need to take it. So that, so that is the uh, situation here. So no ambiguity that is explained previously, which is uh, happened uh, to be a confusion for uh, assigning the codes will not be there if the Huffman tree is constructed and then from the Huffman tree, a code is generated. So here, no, why what, why it is uh, treated as a greedy means? Because there are so many alternatives. You can, you can, you can start with anything. But whatever the thing we are doing, <coughs> we are going for always with the minimum frequency. Minimum frequency. So that's the idea. So with the focused uh, way, we are going towards the uh, final optimal solution. So this kind of uh, approach is going to be called as greedy approach. I hope you understand the uh, idea. So I roughly said about the concept. Um, 